Come along for a wild ride at over 100 miles an hour on the rear wheels of the legendary Hemi under glass. After 39 years at the wheel, Bob Riggle was making his final tour. The hardest thing for me to do is quit. He's a man who loves the sport of drag racing. Bob Riggle spent 39 years at the wheel of one of the most famous and unusual cars in drag racing, the Hemi under glass. This 1968 Plymouth Barracuda was transformed when a supercharged 426 Hemi was put in where the back seat used to be. Power is fed directly to the rear wheels, which creates some impressive traction and a very exciting trip down the quarter mile. This is probably the most famous drag racing exhibition car ever constructed. But it wasn't created with that in mind. Back in 1965, George Hurst and Ray Brock designed the original Hemi under glass to be a competitive racer. But they soon found they had a problem. What happened is about the first two steps out, it was a four-speed car, it would yank the front end into the air. The more they tried to make the car stay on the ground, it wouldn't do it, and it became such a hit with the spectators that they said, okay, here's what we got. You know, let's make a wheel stander out of it. And it's been that ever since. Bob took over at the helm of the wheel stander in 1966, a time when these exhibition cars were incredibly popular with the drag racing fans. All the way through the 60s and early 70s, we had quite a few of those wheel stand meets. And by that time, you had kind of a match race type situation, you know, so it's pretty exciting. We really enjoyed the match races. This rare home video was shot by Bob's brother Dale at the 1967 wheel standing show in Gary, Indiana. I think at that time we had approximately 10 wheel standers at that event. It was US 30 in Gary, Indiana. Ben Chris at that time run the racetrack. Uh, and it was a, a wheel stand meet. They had regular drag racing there, but we had all the wheel standers there. We had Little Red Wagon there. We had the L.A. Dart, the Paddy Wagon, the Fugitive, uh, the Belfati's, uh, you know, wheel standing uh, trick truck, and the backup pickup, and also George Shumper flip over truck, which is, I, you know, I really don't know how many people have seen that truck, but they're going to get a chance to see it, I got a feeling, on this film. In the beginning, in, uh, in the early 1960s, 65, 66, 67, nobody had steering brakes to speak of back then. So what we would do, we would run side by side uh, if you were able to keep your car in your lane. If not, you made single runs. And what it boiled down to is who made the most uh, winning successful runs at that particular day and went the fastest, you know, and so forth on how they determined who won the event. There was really no trophies or anything like that because we were all like hired guns at that particular time. Uh, we had a contract that we worked under and we had to make three runs at each event, you know, and we were paid a certain amount of money. This was a time when the rules were not so strict. And it also turns out Bob was a wild and crazy guy. It was in my, my late 20s, early 30s, and I had always wanted to ride in one of the wheel standards, you know. Uh, there was no seats, so the first one I got into was Gary Watson's paddy wagon and I, I flagged him down and stopped him and I got in the front seat and as he took off and got into the air I stood out through the windshield and I waved at everybody not only going down the track but I did it again coming back down the track but probably one of the dumbest things I did is I got in the back of the backup pickup and I mean there was no seat belts not, I had my feet against the cylinder heads of the motor on my knees hanging on the tailgate and and Holly did a couple short ones uh, uh, wheel stands but the one that got me the worst was we were coming back towards the starting line and he let it down so hard it just about threw me over the tailgate and I said that's enough I mean I jumped out of that truck and kissed the ground because I thought boy what a dumb move that was you know but that's the things we did back then you know. Bob continued to drive the various updated versions of the Hemi under glass until a serious accident in 1975 forced him to retire. Years later a chance meeting launched his second career. I met Linda Vaughn at the SEMA show, and Linda said, Bob, what are you doing? I said, well, I just come out to the SEMA show. I haven't been here in 20 years. She says, you ought to bring the old Hemi under glass back. She says, nostalgia's in. They'd really like to see the old car. So basically, that's how it all got started. Went back and found the car and started getting parts together and this type of thing. And we had her done by 
the end of August 1992. We reintroduced it through Steve Gibbs at NHRA at the U.S. Nationals. Bob built the latest copy of the Hemi under glass in 1995, the ninth and final edition of the famous wheel standard. Mopars on the Strip was the beginning of the farewell tour for the Hemi under glass. Bob Riggle, at the age of 68, had decided to try retirement again after a final season of thrilling fans with sky-high wheel stands. It's the fans that I'm going to miss, the people that come to the races, because they have such great stories, you know, about 20 or 30 years ago, that how, what they experienced when they seen the car for the first time. May of 1966 at Springfield, Illinois. Wow. My okay. first drag race, Emmy Under Glass, is when the car was a four-speed. I forget who was oh, yeah. driving it, though. Hey. Were you? Yeah. Bob regularly sees young fans whose parents wanted to make sure they had a chance to see a piece of drag racing history in action. If we didn't have those fans out there in the grandstands and treat them like you'd want to be treated yourself, uh, you wouldn't have a fan base. We don't rope off our car. We don't rope off our booth. You know, and I'll stay until the last autograph is signed. Max Merritt is the one-man team for the Hemi Under Glass. He and Bob have driven hundreds of thousands of miles towing the car from one racetrack to another. He's a real showman. He'll do whatever it takes. You know, he'll, he'll let people sit in the car and take pictures. Uh, he, you know, he, he just uh, he really enjoys what he's doing. 39 years, hundreds of drag strips, and thousands of two-wheel flights down the track. It still brings the fans to their feet every single time. I, I don't know what it is with the car. It's, it, people will tell me, you know, it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up, you know, or uh, it's an excitement I've never felt. And, and I seen it 20 years ago, and I get to get to see it again for the last time. While millions have been lucky enough to see the Hemi Under Glass run, very few have taken a chauffeur-driven ride in a piece of drag racing history. Basically what I do is, because now we have the steering brakes on it, uh, I do what is called a short hop. Uh, I'll pull through the, the lights, I'll bring the car up, go through into second gear, let the car down, and I'm hanging on the brakes, getting them hot because they're a metallic lining. In order to make them work with a blown car, you have to get them hot because if you don't, if you try to just take off of them cold, it'll drive right through the brakes and you won't steer it. And once I stage the car, uh, I'm looking at the tree, the tree snaps down, I hit the throttle, in my direction of my sight, I look from the hood, I bend my head and I look out through the rear of the window, it's in the firewall, and then I watch the racetrack, the guardrail and the part of the racetrack that I'm in, and that's what I use for my line going down the racetrack, and I can steer with the brakes. If it's wanting to go to the left, I pull back, brings the car back to the right, push, go back to the left. Just like an airplane, the front wheels touch down with a puff of smoke, and the Hemi under glass has completed another 10 second, 110 mile an hour run. It's an exciting run for me, and when I, when I make a full pass and go through the quarter mile, whether it's 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 110 miles an hour, 130 miles an hour, I really enjoy it. I, you know, it, it's like people say, you know, aren't you gonna miss this? I really am. And after Bob had thrilled the crowd with his final run of the Hemi Under Glass, he was honored with a special presentation. Better not be a rocking chair. Oh, we wouldn't do anything like that to you, would we? Oh, dynamite! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Can you guys see this? Oh, I gotta get in this. Yeah, got test driver, Bob. That's right. A well-deserved tribute to a long and distinguished career and the perfect ending to the second annual Mopars on the Strip.